The service that you will be watching is from last Sunday. Welcome. Thank you for coming along. Uh, we're finally ready to get started. Uh, and we welcome Reverend Peter Douglas to our service this evening. It's not his fault. He was told it was seven o'clock. Um, remind committee of our meeting tomorrow evening at 7.30. And then a preliminary announcement for Sunday the 30th of June. After morning service, there'll be a chance to share food in the way that the early church did by means of a barbecue. Um, so Sunday the 30th, barbecue after church. And we hope to have three of these monthly over the summer. These are all the announcements. Well, good evening, everyone. Lovely to see you. And uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pray, you know, and uh, give thanks to the Lord, and that uh, we'll go for it. Heavenly Father, we just uh, humble ourselves before you on Father's Day, and we acknowledge that you're the ultimate Father. You're our Father. And we thank you that for all eternity, Father, you have loved your eternal Son in the joy of the Holy Spirit. And in a sense, every day is Father's Day. You are our Creator. You are our Sustainer. You have made us Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in your image and in your likeness. <clears throat> You've made us to have a, a relationship with you, our Father, through your Son. And in the power of the indwelling spirit. So as we come before you on Father's Day, we come with a sense of joy and thanksgiving at the blessing it is to, to have you as our Abba Father. We recognize on earth that uh, as fathers, those of us who are fathers, we don't always love the way we ought to. Uh, and many of us, our experience of fathers isn't always positive. But we do thank you and praise you that you're our perfect Abba Father. And the love that you have for us and the delight that you have for us, it's, it's the exact same love and delight you have in your son, Jesus. Nothing ever stops you rejoicing and smiling and enjoying him. And because we're united to him through faith, nothing ever stops you from loving and delighting and enjoying us. And that's an amazing miracle. And we're going to be thinking a little about that tonight, about what it means to be, to be a family and to love um, as the family, uh, the family of God. So, Father, thank you for my brothers and sisters here tonight. We pray that you would cleanse us uh, from our sins and that you would fill us with your spirit. We pray that we would really enjoy you tonight and uh, enjoy being with one another. Thank you. Thank you for your presence with us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, stand and sing our opening praise, I hope. And uh, there's no one like Jesus. I don't know what, I don't know what your relationship is like with Jesus, but he is king. And he is worthy of all glory and honor and praise. So let's, uh, let's praise him together as we stand and sing, Jesus is King, and I will extol him.
Well, if you have a Bible, turn with me. We're going to have a couple of readings. We'll do our first one now, and that'll be from Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, probably my favorite uh, passage in all of Scripture. Wonderful. If, you know, if, you're, if you're feeling a bit dry and not quite you know, with it, just turn to Ephesians chapter 1 and, um, and just drink it in. Um, such a, a rich uh, passage. And uh, it's all about what it means to be united to Christ through faith. So let's listen to, uh, we'll just read from verses 1 to 14. And um, yes, I'm um, just going to pray again. Father, we thank you for your son again. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just come. And as we read these wonderful words together, just ignite us with a sense of joy of every spiritual blessing that is ours. And uh, may we keep our, our ears and our eyes open for the phrase in Christ and through Christ. And it's all about you. So bless us as we read your word together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he's freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined, according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our, our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's 
possession to the praise of his glory. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it? Wonderful, wonderful. It's a, it's, a, it's a sense of that, the pleasure, you know, to, according to his pleasure. Imagine that, the pleasure he gets, giving pleasure, <laughs> choosing us, redeeming us, blessing us, uniting us to his son. And we're going to be thinking a wee bit more about that um, a wee bit later on. Um, but let's, let's, let's praise him again. Let's stand and, and uh, worship again, giving thanks and remembering, great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, we're coming before our Father again. That's where we start to worship Him. Let's turn again to the scriptures and we're going to go a wee bit further on in Ephesians. And we're going to go to uh, Ephesians chapter 3 here. And um, I'm just going to read actually, wouldn't, we're going to read just from verse 12. It's kind of jumping in here a wee bit, but um, it's really the, the, the verses 14 to 21. But I can't help but want to read before and after because... Uh, Paul's context is always important, and Paul is he's always writing from prison or suffering, and, and it just puts the context of his joy in Jesus and his prayers. You know, I don't know how you would pray if you were uh, pray if you were in prison, but uh, he's just always other centered. So we're just going to just going to go into verse uh, twelve here from chapter three. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings 
for you, which are your glory. <laughs> and for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. As a prisoner, just a few more verses then, just as he just I prayed this wonderful prayer, then he, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. I read this recently. I was just blown away. Look what he says. What does what, he say next? Be completely humble and gentle. That's how Jesus described himself. Gentle and lowly. Be, be like Jesus. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And we will end there. And thanks be to God for uh, the reading uh, of his word. Do we have a physical offering taken in the evening service? No. No. Yes. Okay, our offering, we'll, we'll, we'll have our offering received now. Thank you. Father, we thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from you. What a father you are. Creating us and sustaining us, saving us, lavishing upon us the right to become children of God. Everything that we have and are is a gift from you. So uh, we just pray afresh tonight as we give you these offerings that we just offer ourselves afresh to you and this church here joy mind your church to you our father and we we just we love you and we want you to use our offerings and we want you to use our lives we remember the scripture that says to offer our bodies as living sacrifices to you and that's what we do so take us and use us and continue with us as we continue to worship you and praise you and give you all the honour and uh, thanksgiving that you deserve. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, before we come into this uh, passage, these passages and think a wee bit about uh, the Father Heart, let, let's sing again. And uh, I need you every hour. And uh, I certainly need him now, and I need him every hour. So <clears throat> let's stand and sing.
we certainly do need the Lord, uh, and uh, we particularly need him now. Um, so just in, in the quiet, um, you can pray um, for me and for yourselves, and uh, just do that now, and then I will pray, and then we'll think a bit more. So let's just pray in the quiet. Father, your word reminds us to be still and know that you're God. And we thank you, Lord, that you're present with us. We thank you again for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the spirit of Jesus who resides within us and is here. We pray, come Holy Spirit. Open up our hearts and minds. Help us to see the beauty of Father, Son, and you, Holy Spirit. Help us to grow in our love and our delight in being loved and delighted in by you and grow as a family in love, a church family. Oh, please have mercy on us. And please come now in the power of your Spirit. Guide my thinking and thoughts my brothers and sisters, help us, we pray, in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Well, hopefully we'll have a PowerPoint coming on here. We minute that will aid us tonight as we're thinking and reflecting a wee bit about loving as a family. And um, if you put up the first uh, uh, scripture here, one of, the, one of the most important things that we need to remember is the, the very nature and heart of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, the Bible identifies our God as eternally as a father, <laughs> loving his son and the joy of the Holy Spirit. And if, you, if you've ever wondered what was, what was the father doing before the creation of the world, this, this verse gives us a bit of a clue. John 17, 24, it's Jesus' great high, high priestly prayer before he goes to the father. And um, it's a beautiful, there's so much, and there's a sermon, this, Father, I want those you've given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you've given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. And that's such an important scripture for us to understand because it, it just, it, it grinds this reality of God the Father eternally loving his son. That's what he was, he was enjoying and delighting in his son in the power and joy of the Holy Spirit. God has eternally been a father. He's the, when you think of the first father that's ever existed, it is God. He is, his very nature is a father, begetting, giving life eternally to the son in the joy and power of the Holy Spirit. And the heart of the Trinity family is love. First John 4, 8, you know it well, God is love. And that's why, that's why it's so important, the Trinity is so important to our understanding of the very overflow of God's heart is this relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The love is just overflowing. And the next uh, scripture here is one that we looked at there and uh, we, we read it earlier. And the scripture before that, uh, which we read earlier, was that we're before the creation of the word, we're chosen in Christ. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Before the creation, we were chosen in Christ. And then he goes on and says, in love, in love, he predestined us, you and I here tonight, to be adopted as his sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. And again, look at that phrase, in accordance with the pleasure of his will. Before the creation of the world, God the Father set his Affection, his affection has always been in his son. But when he was thinking about you and I, when he was choosing us, predestining us, predetermining us, it was out of love and desire for you and me here tonight. That's, it's staggering. 
This is the reality of the pleasure and delight that the Father has. You see, it's important to understand this because the very nature and essence of salvation is sonship. That is the gift that we're given. We're given, salvation is receiving, we'll see and think a wee bit, the very life of Christ himself, who right now is dwelling in you and dwelling in me. And this gift of sonship, we're united into the Trinity family, but also you're my brothers and sisters here tonight. We are the church family. So out of the overflow of being united to God the Father and God the Son through the Spirit, we're united to the Trinity family, but we're united to one another. And I want us to think first and foremost a wee bit more about the Trinity family and the nature of love there, and then also the overflow of that and how that should impact our lives. Now, uh, another, uh, this is a quote here from Adrian Best. This is a brilliant book. Adrian Best, God's Great Embrace. It's, it's the concept of union with Christ. And just the, it, that's what it's all about. But listen to what he says. In eternity past, God the Father was so in love with his Son in the Spirit that he wanted to share this love with many children. That's you and I here tonight. To draw them into his life and to embrace them with the very love he has for his son. I love that, that last phrase. And to embrace them with the very love he has for his son. So, the, the, Adrian Best, God, but it is not a long book. If you want your heart to sing, over the summer, get Adrian Best, God's Great Embrace. It's an absolute peach. And this, this sense of it being loved by the Father with the same love for the Son, it comes from, the God, from, the, from John again. John 17, 26, next scripture. And this is, this is again Jesus' wonderful scripture. I have made you known to them. This is brilliant. This is so... I, 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 Jesus is saying to his father, look, I've made you known to the disciples. And I will continue to make you known. And that is throughout all generations. That's to us. And I will do that in order that the love, that he's talking to his father, in order that the love, father, you have for me may be in them. And I myself might be in them. This is just wonderful. <laughs> I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself will be in them. And this is important because it reminds us of two wonderful realities. The purpose of salvation then, this is this Jesus is saying, this is the reason why he's, the reason why he's made the Father known to you is specifically so that the Father's love for Jesus will be in you and in me. The very essence of our relationship is the love and delight the Father has for the Son, and he delights in you here tonight. And if we're not living and abiding and enjoying being delighted in, we're never going to pass on the love of Christ. <laughs> if you think, you know, you're, you know like that God has it in for you, if you're the wrong view of God, the, the wrong image of God, you're going to be dead in your faith and your understanding. But we are, we, and we're going to think a wee bit more about this. But listen to what he says as well. He doesn't just want to know the love of the Father. He wants to be in you, that I myself may be in them. This is what he's about. And that's the concept of union with Christ, where Christ comes to dwell within our hearts through faith. We're united to Christ, or united to Christ and then uh, we have access to God as our Abba Father. Now, we're going to go to John 14, 20. Um, and uh, some of you know my good friend Colin Miller. If we could have the next slide, please. Some of you know my, my, my friend Colin Miller. Colin works for an organization called See Jesus. I know he's been doing some, some work with some of you here. Um, and Colin and I just love talking about Jesus. And we particularly love talking about the theme of union with Christ. And he, he, he designed this diagram, which I'm using tonight. And um, I find it helpful 
as we begin to think about this reality, what it means to be in union with Christ and how that should impact us. So we have it in front of us here. So again, the context is important. The scripture we're going to be thinking about for a few moments is this here. And the, I'll read the context. is So it's John 14, 20. And the context of John 14, 20, you maybe remember, Jesus has said he's leaving them. And they're, they're, they're distraught, you know. But Jesus said, don't worry. I will come to you. I will send the Spirit, the Comforter who will come to you. So when the Spirit comes, what will the Holy Spirit do when the Holy Spirit comes? And Jesus says in John 14, 20, you know, on that day when the Spirit comes, you will know that I am in my Father. You are in me. And I am in you. This is the first promise of the Holy Spirit. Wonderful, wonderful verses. So let's think about the uh, the first phrase. Maybe click the next uh, slide up, please. Look at the first. The first reality the Holy Spirit will bring is that we will know that Jesus is in the Father. That's that phrase he says. The first thing he says, that I am in the Father. That Jesus is in perfect union and communion with the Father. And then look at just look at verse 11 there, just before that. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the evidence of the works themselves. Now this is very important for us to understand because to see literally whenever Jesus walked <laughs> on the earth, Whenever he walked into the synagogue uh, in, uh, in Nazareth, when people saw him, they're seeing the invisible God in flesh and blood. And such was the connection between the Father and the Son. And Jesus said, look, you believe that I am in the Father, the Father's me. Believe because of what you see, the Father was working 100% through Jesus. Now, it's an amazing reality that Jesus was 100% fully human. So as he walked in, he walked in fully human, but also fully God. And it was in the power of the Spirit that he, he, he did everything that he did. And tonight, you and I have that same Spirit within us. But Jesus has this beautiful union with the Father, the Father and the Son. And Jesus says, I, I, I haven't come to do my own will, but only do what the Father uh, uh, tells me to do. His life was completely surrendered to his Father. It's a beautiful picture of that union and communion that the Father and the Son have. But we're going to unpack then, that's the first part we'll know, we'll understand that, because obviously then, you know, the disciples then, we now know, but then they quite, weren't quite sure who Jesus was, sure they weren't, you know. Who did the, who, who do people say I am? The Holy Spirit will, will enable you to know that I'm in the Father. Just that connection that there is, that when we see Jesus, he is the eternal Son of God. He is the revealer of God himself. So the next slide, please. So the second bit is, so that you know that I'm in my Father, but also the second promise is that you will know that we are in Jesus. That's the you. you are in me. Only three times in the New Testament is the, the word Christian used, but over a hundred times the Apostle Paul uses the phrase in Christ. <laughs> and um, we're born in Adam. Do you remember? Born in Adam. And what 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 we're born what spiritually dead in Adam, yes. So we're physically alive but spiritually dead. So when Nicodemus, when Jesus said, You must be born again, he was Physically alive, but he was spiritually dead. He needed to receive the spirit of Christ himself. He needed Christ in him to enable him to be born again through the spirit. And because we're in Christ, we, we read these verses in, in uh, verses Ephesians 3 to 14. Because we're in Christ, we've been united to Christ. 
the moment you gave your life to Christ, you received his life. Jesus residing in you by the Spirit. So you're chosen in Christ to be holy and blameless, to be like Christ. You are in love, adopted. You're justified, so we're made completely righteous with the very righteousness of Christ. We're sanctified, we're redeemed and glorified in Christ. And when the Father looks at us, he sees us one with Jesus and he loves us with the same love that he has for his Son. And again, these are truths that we need to meditate and know and rejoice in every day. That Jesus has this intimate relationship with his Father, but now he's drawing us into that relationship as, as, as Christ is in us and we're in him. We're, we're thinking about being in him. And next, if you put the next slide up, we'll see that uh, Christ is in us. You will know that I am in my Father and you're in me and I am in you. <laughs> because of our union with Christ, sharing his sonship, we can come in the power through Jesus to our Abba Father as beloved children. Come, 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 go back one more slide there a second. Let me just check. Yeah, thank you. Okay, go to the next one, sorry. Yeah, we'll go to the third one. The third promise is that we will know that Jesus is in us. I am in you. Don't know about your favorite verses in Scripture. There, well, the, 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 the bottom one's a brilliant one. Look at, look at that. You can, sorry, it's so small. Galatians 4, 6. 6. God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Who dwells within me tonight in you? The Spirit of, his, of the Father, Son, Jesus. And just as Jesus, every day of his life, what did he do? Get up early. He went to be with his Abba Father, crying Abba Father. That spirit is in you and I, crying Abba Father. Because look, the third promise is, I am in you. And he's in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And listen to this. It is no longer I who live. It's no longer Peter Douglas who lives. But it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith, he goes on to say, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. What is the gospel? Colossians 1, 27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Brothers and sisters, these are incredible riches and treasures which is why i regularly just go to ephesians and just think about my union with christ and i regularly just go to 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 john uh 14 20 and and just think thank you for these wonderful scriptures that that you've promised that that i will know that, that you jesus are in the father that you, you're in me and i'm in you that the gift of salvation is you is being drawn into relationship with the trinity family Wonderful. I want us to think about some of the practical implications of this. If you put the next slide up, please. Now look at this here. Because of our union with Christ, we've been drawn into the Trinity family. <laughs> the Spirit of Jesus in it. Jesus is in us. The Father himself dwells within us. And we are in, we are in him and he's in us. But notice the practical implications. Notice the black arrow Everything that comes at us must come through the Father, through the Son, and through the Holy Spirit. There's nothing in our lives that we, we are in Christ. We, the Spirit is in us. Look at the, the Spirit of Jesus right in the center of our being. And we're in Jesus, we're in the Father. So whatever's coming at you tonight and tomorrow, it comes through the Father and through his love and his care and his tenderness. And we're going to think a wee bit later on a wee bit about pruning. Because <laughs> some of the things that are coming into your life are not very pleasant. But there's purpose behind 
suffering. Was Jesus' suffering pointless? It looked like it, didn't it? What a failure. What a pathetic Christ. Naked. Bleeding. Dying. Rejected. And yet it's the glory of God. He redeems hopeless, desperate situations. Look at the Bible stories. They're all there, wretches. King David. What a king. What a sinner. And yet God works amidst all of the brokenness and wretchedness. And I, I've no doubt there'll be pain in your life and your family life. But look at Romans 8, 28, 29. One of those beauties, isn't it? In all things, God works for the good of those, not everyone, but those who love him. And then he goes on, that the next verse is that we've been predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So the good things, all things working for the good are that you would become like Jesus. And that's where the pain comes in. We're being stripped away. The flesh has been stripped away so that the spirit and the, and the love and joy of Christ will be manifest. So let me assure you tonight that the pains that are coming through you, they're not without your father's knowledge and your father's tender care. Next slide, please. We're going to think a wee bit about what it means to grow in a relationship with our Abba Father amidst the challenges of life through. We didn't read this, uh, but I'm hoping you know a wee bit about this wonderful scripture. Because it reminds us of the power of Christ coming through us. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So we have this love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dwelling within us. But it needs to get through us. Uh, the love of Christ needs to come through us. So we're the branches. And we must remain connected to Jesus. He's the vine to bear fruit. Because apart from Jesus, we can do absolutely nothing. We need the sap and life of Jesus flowing through us. Do you put up the next slide? <clears throat> John 15 verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. So let's think what we're saying here. We're saying that unless we're abiding in Christ, unless the sap of Christ's life is flowing through us, we're not going to produce any fruit. And what's the first thing Jesus says we're to abide in? It's what I've been hammering home since the very opening words. Love. Abide in my love. Why were we saved? So that the love the Father has, the Son, might be in us. And that we might be abiding in that love. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. How can we love one another if we're not abiding in the love and joy and delight the Father has for us? So it's essential that we are abiding in the love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that we're loving one another. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So let's press in a wee bit more to this abiding in his love and what it means to abide. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So there's two key things and we're doing it tonight. We've been doing it. We're doing it now and we need, we'll do it hopefully tomorrow. To have the life and sap of Jesus flowing through us, we're having his word abide in us. So tonight we're listening we're having the word of Christ as we've read in Ephesians and John 
we're having it abide in our hearts and minds. I'm encouraging you to think on it and reflect on it. And then we're, we're thinking about and we're going to be praying and asking for the Father to help us. We did that before I preached. We're going to be doing it again later on, asking for the Father to help us and to enable us. And this week, if we're going to, uh, if we're going to uh, have the sap of Christ, if we're going to abide in it, if you abide in me, we need the words constantly abiding in us. And we need to be asking our Father as Jesus did. He, you know, remember Jesus when he said, I, I haven't come to do my own will. So he's not thinking, well, what will I do today? He's thinking, Father, what do you want me to do today? So when we're reading the scriptures, we're, we're saying, you know, we're, we're thinking, what do you want me to do today? And it's one of the reasons why I read Ephesians, not just Ephesians prayer, because we're going to think about the Ephesians prayer in a wee minute. It's one of the reasons why I read Ephesians 4, 1 and 2. As a prisoner of the Lord, then, I urge you, urge you to live a life worthy of your calling. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. The very theme we're talking about. My commandment is to love one another, abide in my love. I am not going to do that. I am full of pride and self-centeredness. So I'm pray I pray it, I pray it, I pray it throughout today. Oh, help me. Oh, help me to be completely humble and gentle. Help me to be patient. So just as Jesus just, he, he, he did what his father wanted him to do. If we are going to abide in Christ, we're having his word and we're, we're, we're asking the father and the son and the spirit, help me live this out. Help me to be patient, bearing with one another love. And it's hard. It's really hard when there's that overbearing, boring family member that does your head in or whatever it is. It's hard. Next slide, please. Whenever Paul prays, he prays to Zappa Father that he'll send the Spirit to bring the presence of Jesus alive in believers' life. That's what he's saying there. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom the whole fam every family in heaven and earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power, look through his spirit in your brain, inner being. Why? We already have Christ. When you're born again, Paul knows this. He's writing to believers. We already have Christ dwelling in us. You can't be born again unless you have the spirit. But he says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So what he's meaning there is not just because you have the spirit already, so that the experience of Christ dwelling in your hearts through faith might be there. It's back to this concept of, of the purpose of salvation that you might know that I am in the Father and that I am in you and you're in me. <clears throat> so Paul, is, he wants you and I, when we're praying and when you're praying for people, we're praying the Father to send the Spirit to bring the presence of Jesus. If you're getting me tonight, you would have be better just leaving. But if the Father's sending the Spirit to bring the presence of Jesus, that's a good thing. And as we pray for one another, put up the next slide, please. As we pray for one another, the Spirit is at work. So, you know, that's, that's the weakness. That's the, that's the, I'm not going to be completely humble. I cannot. I could stand up here and preach, but I can't do it. It'll have no effect unless I'm crying out for the Spirit to bring Jesus, to bring his power and to bring love. So the secret for Paul is weakness. That's why we looked at the first and second part of the, you remember the start of the verse? Before he prayed, he mentioned his suffering, didn't he? 
don't be, don't be ashamed or by my suffering. And then immediately after, do you remember? As a prisoner of the Lord, he's weak. He feels his powerlessness, but he prays. So, one of the things I struggle with most in life is just how hard it is to be a Christian and how hard it is to pray and how hard it is to do all these things. It's so hard to live the Christian life because I'm not meant to live it in my own strength. I've tried for years and failed. And um, in our weakness, we're meant to just, we're meant to just give up. <laughs> give up, Peter. Look to the Father. Cry for the Spirit. So if you're weak, you'll pray. Pray to the Father to send the Spirit. He'll bring the Spirit of Jesus. I can love my wife, Jill, Grace and Emma and Joshua in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> but I need to pray. And you'll have heard of Paul Miller, uh, if with through Colin on the power train, possibly if you've read the praying church at all. So I find myself just praying all the time. Because I'm desperate. I'm really desperate. And I feel like my life's passing me by a bit. I remember leaving school at 16. Turned 57 not that long ago, not far off 60. Well, now no boasting about being older than me now here, if, if you're older, or if you're younger. But where did it go? And I want to live for Jesus. And I can't do it, neither can you. And if you want to grow more in this, Colin Miller's your man. I know no one that loves Jesus more and can help you and encourage you to press into this. And let's just take some time to pray and just whatever, whatever's on your heart. But what I want you to think about is I want you to think about this just when you say like when this is when you pray, this is what's happening. The Father, the Father's sending the Spirit to bring the presence and power and love and the effect of Christ into people's lives. So just pray <laughs> for yourself out of your weakness or for somebody. So we'll just take a few moments. I'm just going to go sit here and pray myself. Just Maybe just enjoy the Father. <laughs> just worship him, whatever. Abba, Father, we love you. And we thank you again for Jesus who made you know so that the love that you have for him may be in us and that he himself may be in us. Oh, Father, we want to be those who abide in your love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're so messed up. We're so broken. I so want it all to be about me and grieve your spirit. And yet every second you look at me, you're smiling. You're pleased. You're delighting. Because I'm in your son. 
then your pleasure is always, always there. What a gift of salvation. Forgive us when we think of salvation as being forgiveness or going to a place called heaven and miss the gift of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Miss the reality, Lord Jesus, as the Spirit would reveal that, that you, Jesus, are in the Father, and the Father is in you, and that you're in us, and we're in you. And please help us just to be those who abide in your word and your truth and prayerfully seek to put it into practice. Lord, we just can't do it on our own. And Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters here tonight that, that you would just grant them the gift of faith. And Father, if there's particularly difficult circumstances in their life, Lord, just help them to, to keep hanging in there. Not to, not to jump out of the story, but to keep looking to you. And to trust you and to abide in you and your love. And Father, your word tells us the only thing that matters is faith expressing itself in love. So we want to go from here tonight just basking in being loved by you. And we want to pass that love on by prayerfully just praying over anyone, anyone, everything, anything, and just being you, Lord Jesus, just submitting every aspect of our life to you, praying as Paul did, that, that you, Father, would send a spirit to bring that reality of Jesus who, who is in us. And he's in our brothers and sisters and who we long will be in others that that presence of Christ will be manifest more and more in our families and our church family. Father, bless John and Leslie and the boys. Thank you for them. Thank you for their love for you and their love for your people. Bless the elders and the, the committee and for all of the organizations here. Pour out your spirit. Bring the very presence and power of Christ to bear more and more in each of our lives. In Christ's name and for his glory. Amen. Well, let's stand and sing our closing praise together.
And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the empowering of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and evermore. Amen.